Hi everyone, in this week's video we're going back to the start of the summer, in fact late spring, May 22, uh, and we're going to be going on location across a series of videos coming up on the channel every Sunday. And in this first part we're going to be looking at slowing down on location, tips and tricks to do so to get better results. Let's do it. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin and this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK and I love shooting abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. I'm posting new videos every Sunday, so why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing. You can also check out my website in the description below. Okay, so this is basically uh, the first in a sort of like an eight part series that I'm pulling together on the channel. I promise they're going to be released on time every week. I've already recorded and edited four of them. I've recorded them all in Italy, but I didn't do the outros and the intros. <laughs> I forgot. So I'm having to do that in my apartment here in Istanbul. But basically, these, I think you're going to enjoy them. There's lots of stuff we haven't spoken about before. There's bits of trips and tricks in there, some ideas, compositional stuff. There's also stuff to do with tilt shift. There's also stuff to do with exposure bracketing, loads of bits and pieces. I hope you enjoy it. This is the first part, slowing down on location, as I said. Let's crack on with the video, shall we? Let's go to Italy. Okay, in this session, we're going to be here in Pisa, or near Pisa, in this disused mansion stroke villa. There's not many details inside of here. However, this room is absolutely beautiful. And we're going to be looking at slowing down and fine tuning those compositions. The room to the naked eye looks simple to photograph. And it is, of course, if you slow down. And that's what we're going to be talking about. It's actually tricky to line up a photograph in here, much more tricky than meets the eye. So I've got the tripod set up and my camera ready, mounting my adapter onto my Canon and then onto the tripod. I then proceeded to look around the room and assess the space and then where I'd need to position my gear. I battled with this for quite some time as you can see. Okay, the first things you've seen me struggling along with <laughs> was trying to get my tripod in a usable position. So first of all, obviously I set it up I got it in position, but I've then since realized that actually to get the bird in the ceiling, the beautiful bird that's here, we need to be not only far back as we can, but also as high as possible on the tripod. Now, it's a, a particular shot, to be honest. Um, I would like to incorporate the bird. I like the walls, the sides. I like the doors that are over there. I have moved one of them slightly, repositioned it because it was a bit distracting against the wall. However, I think it'll be better in a landscape format. So that's what I'm gonna to look to do. And I think I've got the 17 mil tilt shift on, and that means that I'm gonna to have to make a panoramic left, middle and right with the tilt shift lens to be able to do uh, this, what I want to achieve essentially. The bird is pretty essential to this shot, I think. I mean, you don't need it. You could just do a landscape orientation photo, say 15 mil on a wide angle but you would eliminate that bird. Even from this position, you would eliminate the bird. I'm using the flip out screen here as well to be able to see what I'm doing. And it is pretty tight against the wall, like almost touching the wall when I flip it out. So the next thing I need to do then is move this camera's position. I'm gonna flip the screen back in. I'm gonna unlock it. I'm gonna put this into portrait orientation or vertical orientation 
on the tripod. That's going to give me much more height. <laughs> so I've got my camera in the desired position. However, it's really difficult to see the screen, even with a flip out screen, because what we've got here is we've got a situation where I cannot put my camera back any further. Probably need to just angle this up a tiny bit further to incorporate the, the, the wing, all of the wing of the bird in the shot, which is exactly what I've just done there. Um, it is now dead straight on the camera, and we do now have everything in view. I'll show you. So this is where I've now got myself positioned. And the key difference here is I'm, I'm there. <laughs> and when I look at the screen, if I, if I press this button here, and that's essentially how I'm looking at my field of view, uh, which is a bit of a mess. Um, very tight, very difficult to fit in, and I've just about got the bird's wing in on the top of the shot. So 17 mil top to bottom. I've got five brackets activated at the moment. I'm probably just gonna do the three. And F8 is fine, ISO 100, absolutely fine. So I've slowed down, I've lined up my composition. Now I'm gonna get the panoramic left, middle, and right, and hopefully that's enough. So next, what we're looking to do now is we're looking to move our tilt shift. I'm gonna just pull that across towards the left. Our field of view is gonna look something a little bit more like this. Um, that's now the wall side. You see what I'm looking at? It's literally the wall side of the shot. So yeah, it works well. And finally, we're just gonna switch it all the way over. So I just need to unlock it again at the top. I need to move it all the way over. So I'm just gonna do that, moving the lens all the way to the other side. It's there. Look at the composition again now. You'll see it's the other side of the door. Absolutely fine. The other thing that I had to do is I had to stand in that window and take another frame to eliminate some of the light splatter on the floor through the window there. I could wait, um, but we've got another filming location to do. So this is a good trick to do actually, stand in, in front of the light, block it, and then we can blend that in later if we need to on the floor. Okay, so this here is the splatter that I was on about on the floor. We've activated the 10 second timer and what we want to do is we want to block the light that's on the floor. I know that I can't cover the span of all of that. So the best thing to do here is for me to hold up this. There's my exposures. I've got the green thing held up. That enables the floor to be now, have one bracket at least where the floor's you know, in. If I was trying to do it with my body, look, I can't cover them all up. Okay, so that is basically that then. Uh, however, I hope you understood the kind of concept about slowing down, kind of fine tuning those compositions. There I've used the tricks of the, using the geared head itself to actually manipulate and move it into position, the, the actual camera. Uh, I've been able to use the flip out screen to be able to emphasize and help myself, uh, give myself a little bit more in terms of like how it is that I would like to frame up and then of course we've enabled the 10 second timer and put the board in there to enable this flicker on the floor these light spots to be able to disappear thinking more about the concept of the finished product than just actually you know going ahead pressing the shutter button and uh, hoping for results so thinking about our end result basically So here is the landscape orientation and I like it uh, and I see I think I prefer this version over the next one you'll see which is the vertical one I feel that this horizontal version is more sellable from a print standpoint and it has a better balance to it overall uh, and I have the bird in the shot albeit just 
I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below now that you've seen both of them. Either way, without slowing down and positioning my camera carefully, I'm not sure either result is achievable, and that is the point that I'm trying to make here overall. That's everything. I hope you've enjoyed that video, the first of probably eight, seven or eight parts. I think eight is good. And uh, I'm going to be posting them every time on Sunday at around about five o'clock UK time. So I hope you enjoy them. I promise you they're going to be on time because I've already done them practically. So you're going to have consistent video content. And then I can get out and start filming here in Turkey because actually there's lots of stuff that I want to talk to you about. One of those things is coming up. I've got a launch of a new Kofi subscription behind the scenes channel that I'm going to be launching, uh, like a page with subscription models, uh, fairly affordable ones, but I'm going to be doing this uh, to show people more of what I do, like aside to this channel on my Instagram page, of course. So keep an eye out for that. I'm going to launch it probably towards the middle of this series. I'm going to be going on location in Turkey as well, but that's for another day after this series as well. And also, if you've got any comments, leave them in the section below. Of course, subscribe. You'll be notified if you hit the bell notification as well next week when I upload. And if not, well, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I hope you've enjoyed this video. See you next week. Bye for now.